but having an exciting part, which is what we next time do. So, as we have, I mean, this is also the subject of this session, so we need to be accepted. I must say, I'm not an expert in public sector myself, uh, but we have a new project I mentioned at the end, at the Institute, but where some of this work is ongoing. So, I report a little bit, actually, on the research group, mostly, and also a couple of papers uh, on this. So, what do we know? Well, there are things that we know. Then what are the determinants of public acceptance that we have to work on and try to leverage to increase the likelihood of this policy to actually work? And um, effectiveness, obviously, that's the one that we think it would be most obvious, and indeed turns out to be the one that comes out of these meta analysis. Um, other co benefits, uh, um, because we also have to look at domestic benefits, uh, for example, uh, air quality or other measurements, uh, and its security, obviously. Uh, very high on the agenda, quite uh, it's, it's shown to be one of the kind of more determinants. And um, turns out that also there's a question of whether they depend also on policy choices in other countries. And mostly people think, you know, what about the policy here? But does it depend also on what kind of policies as my neighbor has or not? Well, there's no exactness. There's a couple of papers that say no, actually, traditionally, previous paper, but Mindenberg and Bernardo and others. Most recently, actually, there is actually a paper, a couple of papers actually saying possibly yes, people do look also to what extent the policies we have domestically fair against the, the policies which are outside, that are outside of our borders. Um, and that, of course, applies also for things like CIPA. There's also a paper that suggests CIPA has indeed uh, uh, widely public acceptance and support uh, because it kind of shows this red line place field. Uh, um, it boosts effectiveness in theory, that's the motivation of, of, uh, of CBAM uh, to increase ambition uh, worldwide. Uh, and also, maybe because it's also less fairness, because it turns out that indeed one actually also the most important aspect is fairness and also uneven or even pocket room implications. Uh, again, being meta review fairness and uh, inequality turn out to be one of the aspects that people typically don't think about so much in economics, but turns out. People from this survey, experimental work, <coughs> care about the vulnerability and even vulnerability implications uh, of an exploited uh, skillfully by politicians uh, um, can actually uh, backfire when you see that there are some, uh, you are especially the most disadvantaged group. Right? We saw, I mean, I'm talking about the Gilles Jean and things like this. It was not just a generalizable case, but they were honestly worse off, so we were complaining that things pretty obvious. So these are things that are known as determinants. Uh, and then, of course, the issues of, 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 of energy prices and recycling. So we know, especially for market-based policy instruments, uh, we're talking about industrial policies. But of course, economists recommend carbon-based uh, market-based policies first and foremost. They raise energy prices, they raise energy prices, issues of issues of equity and of lack of support after all that. Uh, and I think in general, this is true. I just want to mention this. One paper that actually is from a colleague, PhD student, who just doing some preliminary work on the effect of energy prices on the public support of a policy. Here she used the Eurobarometer, but then she also used other data sources for different data sources. What she found actually, she didn't find a lot on the impact of the energy price shock of the last two years on support on environmental concern. It was increased concerns about and the supply and security, um, but nothing is specifically uh, not a big crowd out, let's say, of support or acceptance towards environmental and climate policies. Um, this is just first evidence. I think, well, so I'm surprised shocks. Yeah. The, the, yeah, of course, the idea being, first of all, you have high energy prices, which is what you would expect also by environmental policies. As it be. Yeah, yeah, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Well, of course, the energy crisis also came as a realization of the unsustainability, obviously, of our of lack of energy security. But uh, carbon revenue, obviously, is the thing that, you know, we have models, we have empiricals, and we always come up with this nice story. We have uh, and even across these sides, uh, you see here at the top right, abatement cost. Uh, um, and then uh, uh, we can do things, uh, we can re recycle revenues, uh, for example, equal per capita, so you just do checks, uh, lump sum, 
or you do targeted policies uh, for, for, for poor targeted policies, you add income tax uh, breaks, uh, which is capital tax breaks, whatever you want to do. Um, one thing I want to mention is that we rarely talk about what are the distribution of implication of the climate impacts themselves and also the other climate uh, environmental problems we're trying to solve. Turns out that those are also evenly distributed among uh, people, although the, the empirical numbers are actually a bit uncertain to one extent, which is the case, but typically you can assume that, of course, the richer you are, more you also find out to something. And so this is something that I think we should keep in mind. And if you can then keep these two together, of course, the climate dividend and the climate benefit will take time to, to, to materialize. And mostly it will depend not just on our policies, but the policies of the rest of the world, which is the tricky part here. But mostly, generally speaking, is something that is often not accounted for in the narratives. Um, and so climate benefits and possible conferences are progressive even, and are often underemphasized. And there are many, many different schemes. Uh, the question is which one are we going to choose? And well, obviously, it's going to be a political trade off between support that creates created by these different recycling schemes like this, uh, and, uh, and welfare, you know, whether you want to really maximize welfare as opposed to getting the possibility of poor. Now, I should also say as a modeler that the models we have are not good enough, I, I would say. Uh, they are very simplistic models. They lack some of the micro and micro responses, which are actually for actually Alma is a nice paper looking at, for example, what would happen on labor supply uh, shock as a result of giving money, giving money back to people with checks. Now the macro, which is even bigger, you know, what's going to happen to the economy, what we are the fiscal application of the transition, we talked about this. So all these things compound that we need to be accounted for and all these feedbacks in these models and offer in this paper, which was just published. I can even admit that some of these uh, Feedbacks were just only partially included, and I think we should do a better job in including all these kind of macro and micro uh, responses. Ultimately, I think what that lead, would lead to is a mix of these kinds of recycling schemes, kind of a portfolio, because we have trade offs, uh, and so in the end, you want to just do better by just taking a or a mix of those. Which one? We don't know exactly. But these are the model land, and then, of course, we have the number land, the empirical land. And here it gets a bit messy, I must say, empirically speaking, uh, does carbon revenue recycling help or not in fostering public support? There are papers that say yes. Um, for example, choice experiments in Germany and the US showing that this is the case. Famous paper by Milton Berger, 2022, saying big time no. Uh, again, some experiments in two developed countries. Uh, um, there's a paper by Antoine, actually, the paper that you showed, that you make the best in terms of coverage paper in the world. I love all the OC countries and a lot of OC countries surveys. Uh, you were showing some of that even before. I also was going through the heat chart, the heat map chart on the website. Uh, and I didn't, I didn't know where to put to exactly the yes and no, because kind of the cycling had kind of mixed, it depended a bit on the country. So um, from what I saw from the media. It also depends on how you recycle. Exactly. So it depends how you recycle, exactly. So there's interaction of type of recycling schemes. Also, it depends <laughs> on partisan views. Party view. so, as you know, this is very highly polarized politically. So that's a paper from the US. And also regarding uh, fairness perceptions, which appears to be uh, pretty crucial. But I would say, you know, if you want to go on, on answers, I would say the science is still out, actually. We economists, we think we have the answers in terms of good recycling schemes, but actually it's much more complicated, it seems, or at least we don't know exactly all the answers. I would say there's a very limited generalizability and robustness of these survey experiments and contract experiments in real life, yes. although I'll be very big surveys that Joyce has done is to step forward. It's often one, for, often one at a time policy instrument. That's my feeling, you know, I ask you, well, how do you rate this, how do you rate this? We have, in fact, a policy package uh, to look at and evaluate it on food, which is a bit more complicated, mostly focused on domestic policy and cost of there. And of course, out, on the outside the academic level, where we actively deal with, there are narratives and needs which are often initiated and perpetrated by the incumbents, which often drive uh, 
you know, consumption and feeling and some perception. I give you the most valuable thing is just what the discussion about the most terrible accident mm. in Venice just a few days ago. And the ministry, our minister of uh, transportation alluded to the possibility that this was caused by the fact that the bus was an electric bus. Well, I mean, there are some batteries in somewhere, but clearly and where. What an idiot. And this is an extreme case, but we hear so much misinformation all the time. And where is it coming from? And people necessary for that, all the details, more than quality information. Those are back to the to the trust and science, which unfortunately doesn't seem to fare very high. So I stopped here.